All right, hey everybody. So welcome to Down Home Backyard Gardening. Now today I'm going to start seriously preparing or transitioning this garden behind me from a summer garden to the fall garden. Or I'm going to start getting everything ready. Now, I've been saying for a couple weeks now to start preparing yourselves for fall because the time for a fall garden, actually you start planting at the end of summer. In order to get everything ready, back here it's time for stuff to come out so i'm going to start taking out the tomatoes some of the cucumber plants and i'm going to start preparing the bed or those beds for fall crops so hey before we get started i would like to invite everyone to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already this is a channel for beginner gardeners from a beginner gardener perspective so if that intrigues you please hit the subscribe button go and hit that little bell so you're always notified whenever i upload videos if you enjoy this video or you know someone who would enjoy this video, do me a favor, share it, like it, and comment down below. Okay, so as you can see on this cucumber plant here, down here at the bottom, the leaves are really bad because they have been destroyed by aphids. I mean, look at that leaf. And this, I mean, look at all that right there. That is horrible. Now, as you look, I've got a baby assassin bug. Well, I don't know where it went. But as we pan up through this foliage here, right there's an assassin bug and a bee. Well, the assassin bug you want because they kill bad pests. And obviously, this cucumber plant is still putting on some flowers, which brought that bee in. But because of the damage down here it's time for this to come out i'm going to use this section down here for fall gardening and it's just time for this plant to go away and as you can see there there's another juvenile assassin bug right there also the other day i had ladybugs on this plant right on this cucumber plant right here and i did a short a youtube short on the ladybug larva I'll put that link right here. Even with the beneficial bugs, insects that are in here, that plant's got to go. Okay, so as you can see right there, there's that cucumber plant and all those aphids. Now, one thing to remember is whenever you have a plant that's covered in aphids like that thing is, do not compost that. Get that in a garbage can and get it to the dump or get it away from your garden. Okay, so now this entire area is open, but what I just noticed is are these tomato plants right here. They're not really looking very good. They're all brown on the stems. And for the most part, tomatoes are done. So I hadn't planned on this, but again, whenever you're gardening, you have to be prepared to improvise. There used to be this old saying, and I'm paraphrasing it, but the best thing for a farm is for the ground or the farm to have the farmer's footsteps in it. In other words, you need to get out in your garden. And while you're out there, you've gotta be looking and seeing and adapting to whatever the situation is. So right now, I had not planned on taking out these tomato plants, but they gotta come out. Okay, so now that area is completely wide open. Now, one thing I wanted to mention is, hey, if you all use these tomato clips, don't forget to save them. You can keep using them. No sense in rebuying and rebuying and rebuying. Save them. <laughs> so you probably saw me use the clippers to cut the base of the plants before I took them out. That's because I do something called a no-dig garden. I don't want to disturb the life that's in the soil. And all of those roots, that are down in there are highways for microorganisms, earthworms. So I don't want to disturb that. It will break down inside your soil and it will make it an even more nutritious, rich soil. So I'm leaving all the roots in and I'm not yanking them all out. That's what I do. But if you all do something different, drop a comment down below in the description and share with everybody. Share the wealth of knowledge 
that you have as I'm doing with you all with the, lib with the limited amount of knowledge that I have. Okay, behind me here are all tomatoes for the most part. I have basil through here, some pepper plants, but for the most part, all of these are tomato plants. Now, I was going to wait and save these for fall and see if they'd come back and re um, and continue putting on uh, fruit. But as you can see how bad these things look, I'm just gonna take them out. Okay, so it is a very hot day today and I'm dodging rain showers. I know it's real sunny right now, but 40 minutes ago we had no we didn't have any power. It was storming like crazy and now it's Texas weather. But let me show you what I just pulled out. So as you can see, all of these tomato plants I just pulled out, along with all the uprights that I had, all the supports. But look, but now look how open this is. Now I have to go back through here and take out all these cups and, you know, prune these marigolds and everything. But this area is now ready for fall crops. Now right behind me are the trellised tomatoes. Now I was going to leave them in. Now there's three trellises here, but I've got an idea for them. All of these tomato plants are coming out also. But first, I need to get rid of this trash. Lord have mercy. That's a lot of work, y'all. I think I got probably 20, 30 tomatoes out of all that this year. Maybe maybe more, honestly, I'm not really sure. But that's a lot of work. But now from looking from here, from this perspective, look how much room I now have for fall crops. That is awesome. And I still have these trellises for my idea. And look at these over here. There's a lot of brown in these. So I should have absolutely taken these out sooner. But hey, we're always learning when we're gardening, right? Once that is all done, the last thing I need to do for this bed right here is go through and just totally clean everything up. Make it look nice and clean. I'm gonna add a layer of compost to the top of this and let that break down over the next week or so because I'm not planting anything in here for a while. Um, it's still 100 degrees here. We need it to come down before I start really planting the fall crops. But as you can see now these pepper plants can finally get some sun. I've got all this basil that's growing and you all can't smell it obviously but the smell of basil through here is insane. Like I said in the last video the basil video which I'll put a link to that right here basil helps mask the smell of tomatoes from moths and other pests like the moth that brings in the tomato hornworm and I fully believe that's the reason I didn't have a single hornworm at all on any of these tomato plants so like I said in the last video next year I am planting basil everywhere yo it's hot Man, make sure when you're out there you're hydrating. Don't forget to hydrate. I tend to forget sometimes. <laughs> okay, so I've got one more area that I'm gonna take out real quick. And it's an area I wasn't really thinking about when I came out here a little while ago, but I'm gonna go do that right now. But before I get to that, I wanna mention something. Whenever you're out here in the garden, at least in the south or this area where I am, you, you deal with fire ants. Now, normally you're only dealing with them in their hives or on the ground or whatever, but when I was just pulling out these tomato plants, right beside the tomato plants are okra plants. The fire ants are on those okra plants because some of those okra, some of those plants have aphids on them and, and fire ants are kind of like bodyguards for aphids. Okay, well, I had fire ants all over my arms and down my shirt. So a reason to wear sleeves or a long sleeve shirt 
are, is for that reason alone is to keep the fire ants or other kind of biting pests off you. Okay, so right behind me are the Chinese long red bean plants. Now, as you can see right now, at the top of the plants, they're starting to die. These beans have come on strong all year. Ever since spring, these, these plants have been producing like champs, but it's time for them to come out. Now, again, I wasn't gonna take them out right now, but there's no reason not to, so I'm gonna go ahead and chop them down. Okay, so I just cut the so I just cut the bottom of all of the plants. But if you come in, as you can see, these things really climb well. I mean, look at all this going up the trellis. So I'm going to have to chop these all in half or more than that to get these down. Now, you might be asking yourself, "Well, Chad, there's still beans on here." Yes. I'm going to save those. Those will be my seed beans for next year. As a gardener, you shouldn't waste and I'm going to really try being as productive as I can. And by productive, I also don't, I don't just mean growing and growing and growing. I also mean saving seeds and utilizing them for the next season. Now for the fall, what I'm going to plant right there are peas. I'm going to have two or three different types of peas that are going to trellis up that trellis. That are going to climb up that trellis. So it's perfect. And I'm going to prep the soil for the fall. Again, layer of compost and just let nature work its way down into the soil. So again, what I'm going to do with all these is we're going to dry them out. And then I'm going to save the seeds to use next year. Okay, so a lot of work has just been done in a relatively short amount of time. And that's the beauty of gardening is once you know what you're doing and you get a game plan down, it can go pretty quick. Now, I wanted to say one thing before I forget. On the, on the beans, I did not yank out the roots because a bean is obviously a member of the legume family and those are nitrogen fixers. They put nitrogen back into the soil. I did a video on this on nitrogen fixation, which I'll, which I'll put the link to that video right here. But in a nutshell, beans will take nitrogen from the air and put them down and store them down in their roots. So other plants that need nitrogen can send their roots over and get them from the legume family or from the beans. So it's very important that if you have any kind of bean, you do not yank out the root system. Leave the roots in. Just cut them right next to the soil line. Just let them decompose in place. Okay, an important part of preparing for fall is also starting your seeds for fall. Now, last year what I did is I just planted the seeds for the, in the ground. I didn't do any starts. This year, though, I'm going to actually do some starts and see if I have a better success rate this fall than last fall. Because last fall, I didn't have very much. Uh, I, I, it was my first real fall gardening, and eh, I didn't do really well. I'll be totally honest. So this year I want to change my game a little bit and I'm going to start some starts. But that's going to be on the next video on part two of preparing for your fall garden. So on that video I'm going to go over starting seeds, what you need to start seeds. Now again, if you've already watched the seed starting video, this isn't going to be anything new. But if you have not and this is your first fall, be sure to tune into that video which will be coming out pretty soon. All right, everyone, so that was the video. I hope you all enjoyed this video. You learned something. You maybe got some ideas on what you can do for your garden. Uh, you know, with gardening, you want to tend to have to shape your garden to you. So what I'm doing here might not work for you. So figure out what's best for you in your garden and just get out there and continue growing. And hopefully with good preparation, you'll have a great fall garden, as I hope I have a good fall garden. So I'd like to thank everybody for watching. I really appreciate your support. And as always, everyone, shine bright and harvest hard. Bye. Right next to the soil line and let, let them just decompose, <clears throat> just let them decomp, 
Just let them decompose in place. There used to be this old saying, the best thing that a farm can feel, or the best thing that can, there used to be this old saying, and I'm paraphrasing, and like when I took out, like when I took out the cucumber plant, there were, there were assassin bugs on there. Now I've read an assassin bug bite is super painful. I've never been bit yet, knock on wood, but I don't want to get bit. So if I have to wear sleeves or wear shirts with sleeves when I'm out here doing this kind of gardening, I'm going to do it. All right, hey everybody. So today is time, what does that even mean? Okay everyone, so today is the time that I'm going to start seriously preparing this garden behind me for a fall garden. We're What are you doing? What are you doing? She's such a goofball. We're going to...